Hi everybody, welcome to another Broken Meeple Fear of Missing Out Kickstarter monthly video. If you like what you see, please remember to thumb this up on YouTube and just let me know in the comments what you think about all these games. So, for those of you not aware of what this is, this is basically a little mini-series that I've started where each month I talk about Kickstarters because everybody kept asking me to do more stuff on Kickstarters and honestly... I prefer to just get the game when it comes out for the most part, but I have backed a fair few Kickstarters mainly because of deluxe components or because I have a major, like, wanting for the game. But these days, Kickstarters are getting a lot more, shall we say, expensive. It's getting a lot more uh, uh, aggressive in terms of their strategies among publishers, and people need to be a little bit more wary of where they're spending their money, particularly as shipping has gone crazy, particularly as taxes have to affect a bunch of us, particularly us in the UK, but also just the fact that money is tight, the economy's gone to pot around the world, and we need to be a bit more picky about the Kickstarters we do. So this is just a series where I pick a bunch of random Kickstarters that are airing at the moment by the time i do this usually in the middle of the month i can't cover them all it's physically impossible some will get missed out it's just the way it is but i try to comment in as many as i can and i just give my thoughts without even bothering to necessarily spend like 50 you know 50 years looking at each one to try and see oh let's have a look at the ins and outs no 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 i'm just going in straight blind looking at these and just giving my thoughts as i go so without further ado why don't we put myself in the corner down here and have ourselves a look at the first one. So let's move on to Aqua Garden, the beach combing expansion for one to four players. Now, a friend of mine has finally taught me this game, Aqua Garden. You know, the box didn't exactly look that enticing from the previous version, but it was a nice little game. You essentially moved around a track, a bit like sort of Takedo style, and you, gra you grab these little fish markers, you put them in your little aquarium tanks, and you got points based on what fish you got and so forth. It was a nice, charming game. It took a little bit long for what it was, I thought. I thought it could have maybe like wrapped up a little bit quicker, but it was essentially, you know, a nice little game. Well, now we got an expansion. In fact, we got, it seems like we have a couple of expansions here. We got Seaside Cottage, but then there's also the Beach Combing one, and, and then there's New Facility. So there seems to be a collection of mini expansions, but Beach Combing is essentially like the main thing here. And then you just got a little, yeah, Sea Mimicry. So I guess there's just basically like some little minor add ons, I guess. But yeah, takes about an hour, one to four players, medium weight. I'm not sure I'd call it medium weight, it's relatively light, but as I say, it's very pretty and it's a nice innocent looking theme, even if that cover doesn't really sing it for me when I look at it normally. But I was kind of expecting it to blow my mind as some people were like raving about this game like crazy, and at the end of the day it was, eh, it was alright. You know, I, I thought it was good, I didn't think it was average, I thought it was good. 7 out of 10, I liked it, but can't see myself wanting to pay $82 for both this and the expansion though. The game is cool, but rrr, this is a lot of money to buy, you know, the entirety of Aqua Garden for. Although $45 is not bad for the original game, but then you're adding all those expansions on. And I got no idea what the rest of their games are like. It doesn't even look like this project shipping is EU friendly shipping. Well, why is it only Japan, USA and Canada then? <laughs> Where's the rest of the shipping? It's kind of what I need to know. Uh, it's one of those little Japanese games, though, I think. In which case, I do like those. Those are quite nice. But, yeah, this is just basically, do you like Aqua Garden? Have you been interested in it? Then, by all means, you can just grab it now and grab a new set with some cool fish tokens. In fact, that's probably the main thing about the game. It just looks really nice. So what have we got here? £34 for that. £52 if you want it and all the other little mini expansions. And Aqua Garden, uh, Beach Pirates, so if you want everything, £74 for the lot. Now that's a lot of money for a small little game like this, but it is well produced, more well produced than others. But still, it's a bit of a premium that you're paying. But honestly, I don't think you'll get this in retail. So if you want it, you better get it now, frankly. All right, let's have a look. Cool. My throat's a little off. Righty, the Die of the Dead YOLO expansion. And. Oh, God. If I gotta take out those confirm what you're doing things all the time. This is an expansion to the 
Die of the Dead dice chucking game. It was a, you know, it was a game that, you know, I wasn't like going, oh, this is the best thing since sliced bread. But it was a nice, cool little dice game where you, you moved them in these little coffins and each coffin had a different rule as to what you did with it. And you were trying to get your dice on this staircase. It was all themed around the, you know, the Festival of the Dead effectively. And it looks the part. I mean, it's su got such a nice little colourful coffins and everything. It really does provoke that cool artwork. But it was an half-decent dice game. A bit chaotic with too many players, but, you know, it, it did the job. It was a nice, harmless, light dice game. Now, apparently, we have more content. I'm not sure how much content we need for this game, really. I mean, a solo mode? I don't know. Maybe a little dice game like this could be good with a solo mode, but I'm curious as to how it's uh, going to work. And then the Offrender variant brings in dice drafting. So is that trying to make it more Euro-y, I guess? Hmm... I mean, you got the caskets, you got the boards, fine, fine, fine. Uh, the reviews. Have you got me on there? Let's have a look. Come on. Come on. Really? Really, I'm not there? Ooh, boo. Could have sworn I actually did a review for this. Ah, well. But such is life. But so we got a variant. The logo expansion. Uh, okay, fine. A lot of text. I mean, it looks kind of the same as before. So when a player chooses a casket, a player can add a Zolo token to that board for a special action. When a player chooses a casket with a Zolo meeple on it, they take all the tokens and move the meeple to another casket. This way, players have more opportunities to influence the game through tokens, but by also encouraging the next player to pick certain caskets. Okay, fine. I mean, that sounds pretty cool. And then the Offrender variant is literally a full change to the core mechanics. So instead... So you do shaking and moving of caskets, but rather, so, but now you dr draft dice from it. Uh, I guess too many people were complaining that it was random. Well, it's a dice game. What do you expect? But I guess adding in some dice drafting could be interesting, but honestly, I kind of just liked it as a nice harmless dice game. Uh, pretty cheap though. I mean, 15 quid for that expansion, 20 quid for that, oh, I don't know, 29 pound for both expansions. That's not a bad deal. And the base game's only 37, 60 for the full bundle. It's not a bad deal, actually, for the entire lot. The box is a bit oversized for what you're necessarily getting, and it'll be interesting to see whether this stuff even fits in the box, because I say it's oversized, but that's mainly because of the staircase part and the coffins themselves. It'll be interesting to see if these two actually fit in the box per se. But... You know, this is one for the UK because, well, it's basically the UK. So, you know, this one certainly is more cheaper for us and then a bit more expensive for others. But, let's say, give it a look. It was an, un you know, I'm not saying this is like the best dice game ever, but it was, it was an interesting dice game. It was, it had a cool theme. I liked the chaotic nature of the coffins and the fact that you didn't necessarily know what dice were in there. So, you had to kind of remember, oh yeah, there was a few more red in that one. Where have they gone now? So I'll be curious to see how things go. Oh, the lights were flickering there. We got the mother of all storms outside, so it's a little bit, um, shall we say, temperamental as to whether <laughs> Wi-Fi or anything else is going to go bad. Not to mention it's a bit chilly today. That's why I have nice hot chocolate. Mmm. Nice, slurpy hot chocolate. All right, let's move on to the next one. So we got... Role player adventures and the well the reprint of role player adventures and we got the expansion gold packs is secret now i never did a review of role player adventures but suffice to say it was one of my favorites of the year i really enjoyed this sort of take on the role player mechanic but turning it into effectively a, a narrative story based game it had a lot of branching paths that you could find, a lot of different characters that you could meet and interact in different ways. And you essentially used a pool of dice along with a bunch of item cards to get, you know, roll dice and get specific numbers and colors onto the various combat sheets and skill checks and that you were doing. But it was an all right story. The story was not like the best thing ever, but it was it was good. It was enough to keep me engaged and intrigued throughout the whole, you know, standard fantasy-esque line. But one thing it had was way too much content. I mean, this was a huge box, and it gave you... What does it say here? Uh, the 36 pre-generated characters. You use one of them at a time. If you're playing with somebody else, which honestly, I played it solo, and I thought it worked perfectly fine solo, you play with one, maybe two of these pre-generated characters. 36 was a little bit much, okay? And now you've got another 18 Seriously, how many characters do you need for this game? <laughs> There's a, such a thing as maybe too much content. 
But the expansion is basically just going to give you a seven-story campaign, a bunch of more cards, okay, uh, the journal, whatever, I'm not interested in that. New party journal, it's basically a character sheet, I don't see how that's such a big deal. $55 though is not the most expensive uh, expansion I have seen, and I don't have to buy the graphic novel, so we're talking $55 for another, well, let's say, each campaign took you about an hour and a half to do. Uh, not campaign, each mission. Usually about an hour and a half to two hours to do each one. So you're paying about $55 for about 15 hours worth of content. That's not bad. That's not bad, honestly. I mean, I could go for that. Bunch more cards, some of which you're going to see, some of which you're not. Uh, but I enjoyed the dice mechanic. I thought it was cool. It did get a little bit ridiculous by the time you got three quarters of the way through, though. You ended up with a hand of about 30 cards, and then you ended up rolling, like, buckets of dice in order to actually do your skill checks. But it was pretty neat. Um, same usual people hyping it up. Nobody's actually done a normal independent review of it yet. But, you know, take it from me. Well, actually, no, Dice Tower did. They did a seal of excellence for theirs. And yeah, honestly, I gave it a 9 out of 10. I mean, it was one of my favorite games of that year. I think I rated it my second favorite of 2021. Not that that year was particularly great. But honestly, if you're interested in this and you can afford it, then by all means give it a look. Although it's not the cheapest game in the world. I mean, £110. Although... You know, you can get this one and the expansion. Again, bear in mind that you're playing a 10 scenario campaign in the base game and then another 7 here. Do you have enough time for it? Although, here is an important thing. This expansion here, whatever it's called, the, uh, yeah, here we go, the, uh, the, the Nefra's Judgment or whatever. Don't fall for this. This is a waste of cash. It's backstories for your character. And if you meet certain criteria during the missions, you basically have like another little side plot that's going on with your character and that all sounds great until you realize that you're spending a decent amount of money here i mean look at this 185 dollars for the expansion role player adventures right you're paying another 40 dollars for this expansion you use it once that's it you might be able to use two backstories because it does give you an option to use two but typically you'll use one backstory out of the 50 odd that are in there and this is not a campaign that you're going to play over and over again. You might play it twice, max. I've played it once. I haven't got the time to play it a second time. You might play it twice. You might get two backstories, maximum four, out of a box of about 50 odd. Or I forget how much it had, but it had a fair amount. It's not worth it. It's not worth the 40 bucks. You won't use the rest of the content, so why pay for it? That's the way I'm going with a lot of these narrative games at the moment. If you can't... If you can't finish it, why are you even starting, Is frank frankly? Now, granted, you know, you might argue, well, then why are you playing ISS Vanguard? Well, I need to review it still. and But then I haven't picked up Oathsworn since I reviewed it. You know, <laughs> I haven't got the time to play it. I've got too much to do. So, honestly, save your money and just consider whether you want the base game or not. And then maybe just, you know what, wait for the expansion. I mean, you'll get plenty enough, co you're going to get like 25, 30 hours worth of game out of that base set alone. That's plenty enough. And bear in mind, it's not cheap. And this isn't exactly the, the best, you know, production quality across the board. I mean, yeah, you've got a bunch of dice, but they're pretty basic. The cards are pretty basic. The coins are basic. Mainly, you're just paying for the fact that you've got a bunch of little books and these uh, little player boards and that. So you're paying a premium for this game, but it is fun. So consider it. All right, Tabris, I know so little about this. The only thing that has even made me look at this twice is, well, two things, really. One, it looks kind of nice, looks pretty colourful, but mainly because it's from Randy Flynn. Randy Flynn designed Cascadia, the winner of the last Spiel Diaris. Now, granted, I do believe that Cascadia deserved to win the Spiel Diaris. However, it was going up against Scout and Top 10. Top 10 isn't exactly a game that screams out, you know, winner of the Spiel Diaris, and Scout is crap. So, honestly, yeah, take that for what it's worth. But it's not like it had a lot of competition. But Cascadia is still really good fun. I'm glad it won. So Tabris is now from the same designer, except instead of animals, we're now talking about carpet weavers. Yay. We're back to this whole Middle Eastern, Grand Bazaar, buy and trade, make carpets. Okay. Where are you going with this? Because already that theme doesn't interest me one bit. Uh, metal coins. Okay, fine. Uh, is that literally every scheduled upgrade is free to every backer? A playmat in every box? Mm, nice. 
Save 25% on the Premier Edition and score... So, Metal Coins in the Playmat in the Premier Edition. Okay. And that's for, what, 85 dollars? So, what have we got here? Premier Edition. Oh, that's only 60 bucks. That's not bad for including a Playmat and Metal Coins in there. I hope I'm reading that right. Oh, wait. Maybe not. Uh, Tabris Grand Bazaar Puzzle. So, includes... Premier Edition includes all non-locks. So, what do you get for... Almost everything offered in the campaign at the lowest price. So you get the Premier Edition, you get the Metal Coins, and you get the Punch Board. Okay, I'm assuming the... I assume that the um, play mat's in there. I'm not sure. Let's have a look. More info for the Premier Edition. Um, what's in the Premier Edition? Uh, let's see. So it gives you the meeples, gives you some uh, Weaver mats. Mats? Really? Is this all play mats? Uh, comes with a basic insert. Pers uh, let's see, English edition also comes with Persian rulebook. That's different. Uh, custom insert, mold in place, la la la. Card sleeves are welcome. So I guess that's not including the playmat. It's a little hard to tell. Although it does say playmat in every box. So I guess there is a playmat in every box. So I guess it's just a case of getting the metal coins. And maybe the dice tariff thing, which I'm not really that interested in. Okay, fine. But the only thing is, what do you actually do in this game? <laughs> so that's the thing. I know nothing about these rules. Each turn, move one of three apprentices through the bazaar. Apprentices of limited range. Buy materials at shops. Better at barter at traders. Okay. Uh, the market fluctuates. Complete commissions. Skill unlocks better commissions. Blah blah blah. Higher prestige. Uh, unique player abilities. Play so low. Yeah. Um. Okay. So yeah, it's a worker placement game. Fine. I like that. And the guy designed one of my favorite games from, the, uh, from that year. Okay, Cascadia. That theme and that description isn't selling it to me, though. I mean, I get that he's probably made a very good, you know, gateway-ish level, you know, game. And it could be good fun. I mean, I probably underestimated Cascadia when I first heard of it. But that theme and that description sounds like every other game like it with this theme. So, where's the unique selling point here? That's what I'm not getting from this campaign. Could it be amazing? I don't know. I don't think this is something I'm going to be desperate to back. I mean, if you get the playmat in every box, I'm literally only backing this to get the uh, metal coins. Whoopie-doo. But look at this. Region 1, UK. So $20. That's $80 for this. Hmm. I'm not convinced. And, I mean, I don't know of any... Let's see. Who's who's had to look at this that isn't doing Kickstarter backs? Uh... Kickstarter, Kickstarter, hmm, localization partners, I don't, I don't recognize half of these people, I must admit though, I mean that's good, hopefully some of them are small content creators and they're getting some, you know, getting some uh, buzz on that, but I'm not sure what that is, solid, okay, uh, and that's all the risks and challenges, okay, well, I mean, it could be good, but I mean you're paying $85, $80, and that's the, no, the, the basic thing. I mean, if you get the Grand Bazaar bundle and ship it, you're talking $105. I know Kickstarter is getting expensive and this is kind of the norm, but still, you got to be willing to spend a lot of money on some of these games. And this game doesn't look like something that's worth $100. Yeah, you know, the Premier Edition is, what, 60 That's going to be 80 minimum. And you got to wait till November 2023. you got a whole year to wait for this. This doesn't look like a game that needs a whole year to get ready, but... I don't know. Maybe it could be great. You know, I'm certainly going to want to try it, but I'll try it when it gets released. I got no interest to back it right now. Alrighty, Unconscious Mind. Whoa, isn't this getting the hype from the usual suspects? Well, you know, I have actually played this game now. At least, a, you know, an advanced deluxe prototype of it. And I've given my full thoughts on the game during my last podcast. So I'm not going to belabor the point too much here. But the game is good. But I think it needs time to stew in the oven a little bit longer. Everybody, you know, like I said, the usual suspects are basically going, this is one of the best games of 2023. It hasn't even got to that point yet. But, no, like, literally the first four people I see are the usual suspects. You know, I have played this, and I do agree it is a good game. It's a great game. You know, in fact, I think I had a... I had, I, it was brain burny. It's got an interesting theme. It sort of reflects that theme. It's more that the theme is interesting as opposed to the mechanics actually tying into the theme. Yeah, you can throw a few bits of terminology around like catharsis and that, but the way you're doing it is kind of, you know, mechanical at the end of the day. But it was good fun. 
but it's it's a little fiddly it's very ap prone if you are talking about curing the patients because you've got all those different beads to mess around with on these insight dials and then you've got multiple ways to manipulate them and add them and upgrade them and downgrade them and anybody with ap needs to stay the hell away from this game because they will drag it out like crazy you know I, I, four players with this is going to be a bit of a mission and even though mechanics wise it's supposedly medium weight it's cropping up to the heavy mark i mean this is definitely medium slash heavy areas you know and i don't like to do medium heavy and decimals and stuff like that i hate that so if I was going to choose between medium and heavy for this, I'd probably go... I mean, it's it's more than it's AP prone, it gives you a lot of options, but they're not that complicated. I'd probably go medium, but that is the upper echelon of medium. It does look good though, I mean, these ink pots are great, and you've got the Professor Meeples and some beads, and I love the artwork differentiation between Vincent Dutrait and Andrew Bursley. Oh, these are very nice, but... I don't need expansions with this game because, frankly, I think the game's got enough stuff in it anyway. And besides, I mean, this is literally just a few extra cards. Whoopie do. Uh, I don't care about an art print pack. I'm not that desperate. The Nightmares expansion sounds like a cool concept. I'm worried, though, that I'm going to be scared to death to play it because uh, some of these grief players look uh, a little freaky as it is. But there is a picture there of a giant spider in a dream card i'm sorry but do you arachnophobe much uh fantasia that is a card that i will tear up if i see it i do not want that thing in my vase when i'm playing this game i know it's called nightmares but we can do other things of nightmares rather than putting one of the biggest fears on the planet in broad like massive form in a nightmare card because that will probably give me actual nightmares hey not not cool not cool play mats love play mats they'll be cool so i mean this does look cool and the collector's box is going to give you miniatures which you really don't need and the pet miniatures which i must admit do look cool it kind of looks like my um uh, sister-in-law's dog uh, the ink pots are fantastic. These little uh, resin ones with real corks. Oh, they do look good, I must admit. Forget the treat. Forget like resin, other tokens, and miniatures. Give me those ink pots. That's all I want. And little play mats. And of course, some people have gone to town and painted them. But it does need a bit more time. It needs a little bit of streamlining, a little bit of cohesion with some of those curing rules because it did get very fiddly at times. And just maybe just stew it in the oven a little bit more. And the rules are updating as we go along. It is developing. But the fact is, I don't know what the finished product's going to be like. And this wants you to spend $120 plus shipping. Now, yes, you've got ID Lite, which, um, fair play to you, Fantasia. This is a very good way to do uh, shipping. To do this ID Lite where you don't have the, like, a bunch of, uh, what do you call it? Da -da 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 -da. A bunch of, yeah, a bunch of boxes to ship. But it's supposed to be reduced shipping. The UK difference between the shipping is 19 euro to 15 euro. Okay, I was kind of expecting a little bit more of a jump than just, you know, the equivalent of three pounds, you know, for making such a big deal about ID Lite. I mean, for the sake of that, you might as well just give me the boxes for the sake of an extra three quid. It's not a big enough saving for me to go, woo-ha, it's amazing. But it is a cool concept, and I would like to see more people do it, just maybe with more of an impact. $120, though, I mean, the playmats are cool. The collector's box and miniatures and that are nice. The ink pots are nice. I don't desperately need the expansions. And I certainly don't want that big spider in my face. I just don't know. I think $120 plus shipping is a lot. Oh, no, it's not $120. It's 120 euro. So that's even worse, especially for us with the pound. So that's basically 105 pound plus, you know, you, see, you are talking around the region of about uh, 110, 115 quid. It may be produced to the point of needing 115 quid, but I'm not sure the game is good enough to warrant 115 quid yet. And there aren't any independent, you know, spokespersons for this, so at least not many that I know of. So I'm kind of like, hmm, you know, what to do? But if you want to know my full thoughts on some more detail in the game, then check out my recent podcast episode where I've talked about it more. It's tempting, I must admit, but I've got a feeling that I'm probably just going to say, look, you know what? I don't need the deluxe components. If I want it, I'll get it when it releases. And like I say, I would certainly like to play it again. Zoo Tycoon. Zoo Tycoon. Zoo Tycoon. Never played the game. <laughs> it's apparently based on a video game, which I've never played. 
Now, I don't know this company. Uh, who is it? Uh, let's see. Who is it? Mark Durr. I'm guessing that's not necessarily the co-founders of Treaker, uh, Treaser, I don't know, and a master's degree in business administration. Um, oh, and I'm responsible for the organization. Whatever. I don't need to know your university degrees, but... Your zoo in a box with more than 230 animal meeples. Okay, a highly formatic board game experience. Well, we'll be the judge of whether it's formatic. However, you had me at 230 animal meeples. Actually, to be honest, you had me the word zoo. But still, <laughs> all right, what have we got here then? Uh, Canadian, is that CH, Canadian francs? Is that, is that the currency? I don't know what's CHF. One to four players compete to build the most recognized zoo in the city. In a strategic and deeply formatic board game, again, we'll be the judge of that. Each player has the freedom to develop their own zoo with 34 animal species, food booths, zoo shops, and many more attractions. Now, Dinosaur Island tried to do something similar, and like I can say, that was a really, really good game, but that one is starting to drop for me. The question is, can this do better? And like I say, it does look nice. That zoo market and all these cards with colorful artwork, oh, they do look good. I mean, you know, I wouldn't say no to this alongside something like Ark Nova. Uh, some event cards, some enclosure tiles... Lots of animals, a bunch of buildings, a ton of uh, cubes. Go away, cubes. No, I don't want cubes. Mm. I don't want cubes. But you got a lot of different animals. A lot of different animals. Wow, are they going to package this in the box? And then the deluxe one, they're all screen printed, which do look pretty awesome, i got to admit. Now, the only thing is, this one is not going to have... Let's see, this Kickstarter exclusive content will only be part of present and future Kickstarter goods. And it will not be available in worldwide retail. So this is Kickstarter only. Fear of missing out much? Yeah, that's the only worry. And the game is £94. Ooh, 94 I mean, you do get a lot of meeples for that, though. And... Hmm. Drink a bit of hot chocolate. Right, so look. Okay, £94. Although, what's shipping? We'll get to that later, I guess. So... You must find the perfect balance between popularity and conservation. At the end of the game, the lower of the two values represents your victory points. We're going with the Knizia thing here. So popularity increases the revenue, and conservation brings the very small advantages. Very small advantages, but must be well planned. This kind of sounds a bit like Ark Nova. I mean, replace popularity with appeal, and replace conservation with, well, conservation. Yeah, it's, that's basically Ark Nova. Okay. Uh, let's see, you need demand for different genders, <laughs> genders of parrots, apparently. Uh, lots of different animal meeples. Uh, important to keep the happiness level of each species up, which has experience, free space, number of retreats, and group size. Um, I mean, it looks cool, and I would certainly like to try it. It's, you know, it's, it's definitely got... Yeah, okay, usual suspects, right. Um, uh, do, oh, board Game Ramblings have talked about it, though. Yeah, that'd be interesting to give a watch. But I... Er, £94. And that's just for the game. Okay, so what have we got? One copy of the game in English and a Kickstarter exclusive giant panders. All right, whatever. And silk screen. Okay, fine. What is shipping? Okay, so what have we got here? All shipping costs in CHF. I'm guessing that's Canadian francs. But all right, what have we got here then? So one game... Standard version and deluxe both have the same weight, so the shipping costs are also the same. Okay, cool. So I'm looking for... What am I in? UK? Where's UK? UK, UK. Where is the UK? Seriously, where's the UK? Oh, GB. Here we go. So we're Europe free. Europe free. 20 CHF, which 1 CHF equals about 1 US dollar. So, okay, whatever. So probably about 10, 15 quid? Not by much. I mean, 105 is is 105 is 94. That's only 10 less. So let's assume that it's about 10 quid more. So that's still 105 bucks. 105 bucks plus tax. Bear in mind, in the Britain, we're going to have to tax this as well. So everything I've mentioned. If you think that the t the price is cheap, bear in mind we're going to add another 20 percent on for VAT. And I know that's our fault. Well, I say our fault. I wasn't responsible for it, but it it's still something we have to keep in in mind. Okay, so, well, I mean, okay, I mean, it does look cool, but again, I don't know if it's, the problem is, if I don't buy it now, then I'll never get to play it, and that's what kind of sucks, I don't like the idea that I must buy it on Kickstarter, or I can never play it, I mean, fine, if you want to put the standard version in retail, 
I don't see why you can't put the standard in retail and keep the deluxe to Kickstarter only. But forcing me to basically decide do I buy this now or never buy it, when all I can go by for the most part is basically just hype, that's not something I'm desperate to, you know, put my hard-earned money towards. So, well, I don't know. This is going to be a weird one to decide on, but I'm not sold on it just by looking at it from a gameplay perspective, even though it's got a lot of cool animal meeples. Maybe it would make more sense to me if I'd actually played Zoo Tycoon the game, because I don't think I have played Zoo Tycoon. But, no, nah, actually, I know for a fact I've not played Zoo Tycoon. But, yeah, one scoring board, a zoo market sheet, some zoo boards, only 84 animal cards, 21 per player, so it seems like you've just got your own animals as opposed to a big set of animals. So that's a bit of a shame. So you've got the deeds and that, but it looks like everybody's just got a select few animals and that's about it. Mm, kind of prefer the way Ark Nova does it. Uh, it's not selling me, but it is based on a theme that I do love. I mean, I do love pretty much any nature or animal themed game theme wise, so I'd just like to play it rather than just be fearful that I'm going to miss out. But you know, 3,000 backers is not half bad for effectively an indie game. All right. On the underground, oh, this makes me so happy. This makes me so happy and yet so sad. Because I have been waiting forever for this game to get its Paris and New York map pack. It's standalone, great, but honestly, I just want the boards. Just give me the boards and the cards and I'll fill in the blanks, all right? You know, I love this game. I love the London and Berlin one. I love this reprint. It's it's such a good game. Cap it at three players, four if you must, but really, cap it at three players. Get the solo underground thing, which is apparently included in this, actually. The solo expansion is included in this edition. Believe me, it's nice. God, blimey, it really is getting flooded out there. But there is something about this. I mean, firstly, two to five players. Will you stop trying to make this a five-player game, Ludi Creations? You know the game sucks at five players. Then make this two to four. And four is even not the best count. But yeah, just cut five out of the equation. The game sucks at five. Deal with it. But this game is amazing. I've done thoughts on it. I've even done a couple of solo playthroughs of it, you know, using the Underground Challenge. This idea with the passenger that you move around, the lazy passenger, you're trying to build your tube networks and get him to ride your trains for points, but you connect up other little bits for points around the board. It's just such a cool, like, game. Now, why am I sad? Because of this. Where is it? Where is it? And, uh oh. Paul Grogan even did a how to play on the underground, so by all means, check out his video. All right, here's the problem. I feel like I feel like this house is going to get washed away. Right, so where is it? Where is this thing? In fact, oh, hey, they've even got my they even got my original review. Thanks, Ludi Creations. Yeah, would even play on the underground with four players. Yeah, I would actually play it with four. But although, to be honest, really, was that the best quote you could come up with for me? I feel like. I feel like I said a lot more good stuff about the game to, to uh, warrant four players. And this is one of my older reviews, actually. Yeah, that logo and that. Cool, how this channel has changed. But, yeah, he's done some playthroughs as well. They haven't got my solo playthrough, though. Maybe I might have to send them the link and remind them of that. But where is it? Here we go. Europe-based backers. Shipments to backers in the EU, UK, or Western Europe are not possible. What? This is due to the lack of an EU UK VAT collecting and accounting function on Kickstarter. Is that a fact? Because a lot of other publishers are managing this. To make a long story short, this is our first campaign where new re regulations for VAT accounting came into force, mainly because the UK screwed itself over. And yes, according to this, a platform must collect and pay out VAT from buyers on behalf of sellers as part of the purchase process. Unfortunately, this has not yet been implemented on Kickstarter, but then why don't you use GameFound then? And given that we want to continue offering EU and UK friendly shipping, we need to find another solution after this campaign is over. Again, check GameFound. Can't they manage it? Um, our accountants have indicated that doing this is not compliant either, as VAT needs to be recorded quarterly. Yes. Although, yep, yeah, quarterly. And it may be a while until we can use the pledge management platform to charge VAT. The only thing is, now I get now this screws us over in the UK. I mean, we screwed ourselves over and this makes me very sad because I really want a copy of this game. Ludi Creations, if you're watching, I know it sucks. I'll give you the extra cash to ship it over. I'll pay the VAT. But seriously, I want a copy of this. I'll review it. Please, <laughs> please let me have this. But why Europe? Why is Europe a problem? I mean, I don't, I'm not, I, I know UK tax. I don't necessarily know the European tax laws at the moment. But surely Europe doesn't have a problem. I mean, you're based in Finland, according to this. 
Surely, if you're in the EU, you shouldn't have a problem posting to Europe. Surely, it's just UK that's a problem. Kind of odd. I mean, you can manage the USA and Canada and Australia and Vietnam and the United Arab Emirates, but you can't manage Europe? That just seems a little bit odd, but I don't know what the accountant's advice has been. I don't know how Kickstarter works from a platform perspective, so I'll just have to take their word for it. But it makes me very sad. So if you're one of the lucky few that can actually order and get this game, then by all means do it and grab the previous one while you're at it, because four maps for this will be brilliant. Make certain that you get the solo mini expansion, and also, I don't know if it's on here. Can you get the solo expansion for the previous one? Uh, yes, you go. Underground Challenge, London and Berlin, if you grab the deluxe bundle. Yes, get the solo challenge. David Turksey actually knows how to make a solo mode that isn't stupidly complicated, and it's in this game. It's a great solo mode, but yeah. By all means, get this. I'm so sad that I can't get a copy easily, but maybe one day I'll get to add this to my shelf. But I've waited so long for Paris and New York, and to be told that I'm not going to get it because our country is stupid is heartbreaking. All right. Series. 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 Uh, series. Series. This is from Artipia Games. They did ask me if I wanted to... Um, look into this one but sadly with the amount of games i got to cover all the way up to christmas it's just not possible i could never get this done before this finished and i just had to say pass but i will be definitely happy to give this one a look on re on retail when it's actually out ready and developed so we shall see one to four players 30 minutes a player okay fine what have we got uh yeah, board game ramblings have had a look at it. Uh, clearly, they had more time on their hands. <laughs> but uh, let's see. Series is a highly thematic sci fi, medium weight worker placement, and engine building board game. Uh, construct buildings and create an efficient game engine that will produce all that is needed for their corporations to progress and develop. Take up construction projects, improve upon the colony, trade raw materials, research technologies. This kind of reminds me of Crisis. Remember that game? All right. Uh, the artwork's nice. Screen and meeples, they do look cool. A dual worker placement mechanic that provides various different meaningful choices and deeper strategies. A deep and tight enough game, blah blah blah. Le Usual leader pawns to execute actions on the game board. A traditional worker placement mechanic and also use the available worker pawns from a common pool to activate your outstation buildings. <laughs> if you can hear the noise outside, I do apologize. If you can't hear it, then, well, I'll shut up now. Right, okay, so what makes it unique? Balanced combination of innovation and rich theme. Cool, you do actually come up with some interesting thematic ways to tell stories for a games, a la uh, Pursuit of Happiness. Okay, fine, but what else is it? So, thematic type medium weight sci-fi Euro board game is not uh, a unique selling point. Uh, two major innovations. So, dual worker placement mechanic and the choice of constructing new or upgrading existing corporate buildings with a unique player area architecture. Not quite sure on how that... Uh, functions and how that's different from other things but this dual worker placement mechanic seems okay and you get a spinny board with the asteroids orbiting around the sun and grabbing resources from there so that's pretty cool this is very nice artwork on these cards actually i really like this nice sci-fi look it kind of reminds me a little bit of um actually yeah it does kind of have that uh what is it called circadian's first light look the one that garfield games did large game board facility maps resource tracks hq Astronaut meeples, mining probes, uh, cubes, I don't want cubes, no, 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 no cubes, cubes, deluxe of it immediately. Uh, not interested in little mini expansions, I'm more interested in the main game. Do we need this? A cosmetic placeholder for the active cargo spacecraft tile. Tile, I hope you mean tiles or something, I don't need this huge thing just to hold one thing. A uh, bunch of sleeves, uh, oh I see, but really that's it. That's all it is. $26 for that just to hold a tile. That seems a little bit much. Okay. I mean, it looks interesting. The, the dual worker placement system sounds pretty good. You know, I'd certainly be interested to see that in action. But, as been said, it's not something I have time to look at in preview form. You're just going to have to put up with most of the usual suspects. Although, by all means, give a, you know give these two a watch. And, ugh, and what's the shipping? Europe, United Kingdom, $15. That's not bad, actually. $15 ain't bad, but how much is the game? Uh, do, 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 do. Only $60? Really? $60? $15? You're talking about 60 quid for this. It's not bad. And there's no deluxe version. It's just basically this and nothing else. 
that's not a bad deal, actually. I mean, the, the game sounds cool, uh, the artwork looks good, and that's a cheap price. Compared to a lot of these others where I've had to say, oh, $100. I mean, Tabris wants you to spend $110. You know, Roleplayer Adventure wants like 150 quid off you. Aqua Garden wanted 90 euros off you, or 90, whatever, like 90 quid off you. Zoo Tycoon wanted 150. Unconscious Mind wants 120 for the, the deluxe version. I think it's like 90 for the normal one. This one to be 60 for the complete game. And most of this other stuff is included in the cost. And that's assuming you don't opt for this. Because you can actually decide to pick it up next year at Essen Spiel. And honestly, I don't get why more people don't do this. Now, granted, Essen Logistics are, well, crap, for the, for the say at least. You know, a lot of publishers have horror stories about their stuff arriving at Essen. But if you're willing to take that little risk, picking it up at Essen is a good way to go if you're going to the convention already. I mean, if I do any Kickstarter and they offer this... I'm going for that option. I mean, that is exactly what I'll do, because that saves me 10, 15 quid on a game. I'll take it. In fact, you technically wouldn't have to pay that. Or would you? Hard to say on that one, but, you know, I ain't got time to think about it now. But certainly, yeah, go for that if you're going to Essen. Mmm, delicious chocolate. Mmm, mmm, mmm. But yeah, I know this looks interesting. I'm intrigued, actually. You know, the system sounds cool. The game sounds cool. Uh, looks cool. Um, and it's cheap. Like I say, it's a good price. Now, I am no need... I mean, $10, 10 cars, 20 tokens, whatever. I mean, uh, I guess... I mean, you know, the comment sounds good and it's only $10, so why not? I have no need for this printed spacecraft and I can get my own sleeves. So, um, what stretch goals? More material? So, what have we got there? So, it's funded... Some asteroid cards, favor tokens, some more cards, 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 more cards. Okay, so not a ton of stretch goals, but I mean, it looks cool. So, I don't know, I'll keep an eye on this one. I'll try to review it when it comes out on retail. Alrighty, what have I got? Three more? Alright, Canvas, finishing touches. I still have not played Canvas. I'm sorry, I just haven't. I mean, the Kickstarter was really expensive, and this is no exception, to be honest. I mean, it's 35 you know, $35 for an expansion, and... You know, that's, I mean, does this include the board or is that just, uh, you know, just for a bunch of cards? Now, granted, this one at least has actually had actual reviews. It's actually been released and people have played it. So I can actually trust a few more opinions on this one. But I, it sounds like a cool game. I mean, it's a gimmick, but it sounds like a cool gimmick. But the question is, that's a lot of money for this and two expansions. And it's not, do the two expansions add that much to the game? You know, I mean, yeah, you got a bunch of cards and these translucent layers and you can create some weird and wonderful pictures. It does seem really cool, but that's a lot of money to spend on it. And it, I mean, you get quite a bit in reflections, but finishing touches doesn't look like it adds very much. And you're expected to pay the same price. And what do you, what do you pay for the whole lot then? So if I want the complete trilogy, say $30, still 120 bucks for that. Jesus. Uh, base game, $50. And then you've got add-ons like more, you know, more cards or oh, the wooden tokens. So you're going to get like iffy tokens. You've got to spend another $15 for that. I mean, uh, I mean, 100 wood ribbons. Do you really need wood ribbons? I don't know. And a bunch of other upgrade packs. Bias guide. Stretch goals look pretty cool. I mean, the game does seem cool. Shipping will be charged after. And yes, we've got to pay VAT as well. So that's 120 plus shipping plus tax. Oh, that's going to hurt. And where is the shipping? Where is the actual shipping? Did I skip it? Oh, shipping and tax. Oh, refer to the spreadsheet. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, yep, that's loading on the screen. Oh, blimey. This is detailed. Okay, what have we got here then? Da -da 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 -da. UK is going to be in some weird zone, isn't it? Because oh, no, it's in zone A. $12 to ship one game plus six per additional game. So we're talking $25 to ship everything. Okay. $25. So I'm $145 plus 20%. Oh, blimey neck. That's a lot of money. It's like $170 odd dollars plus or something to get what is essentially a light gimmicky gateway game. And I'm sure the game is... The game does sound really cool. I really want to play this game. But I'm not spending that kind of money on it. I don't care. And then I'm worried that if I just get the base set, I'm going to think, oh, this game is really good. I'd like to get the two expansions, please. And then can I get hold of it? 
Every time it comes out on retail, I seem to hesitate and then it sells out immediately. It is a little bit of a pain, but I think I'm not gonna I'm not gonna back this for that price. But I am gonna have a bigger look for this when um when it comes out for retail next, assuming it does come out for retail again. And then I'll maybe give it a closer look and try and grab it just on the fly to do a review of. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, the Dice Tower loved it. You know, Tom Vassell loved it. So fair dues. You know, I trust his opinion sometimes. <laughs> so we'll go with it. All right, fine. Uh, the Queen's Dilemma. Queen's Dilemma. Now, I played the King's Dilemma. I can't remember if I reviewed it or not. Uh, maybe there'll be a review video. But if I have, and they've actually bothered to look at it, they'll actually see it down there. But I'm not sure I actually bothered to do a video on it. Queen's Dilemma is a sequel to this. So this was basically a game where you uh, the, you had a medieval story play out, and each of you played a faction, you know, a, a, a particular group. And the idea was, was that all this stuff was happening. So, you know, people come to visit or calamities ensue or there's a witch hunt going on or something. And you had these cards come up that said, right, how do you want to vote? How do we deal with this? A or B? And you discussed as a group how you were going to do it. And then depending on what you voted for, you got to see the story progress in different ways. You were trying to earn bonuses for your particular faction. So even though you're trying to keep the city under control, you've also got your own secret agenda. It was a very cool concept. Bad production quality. <laughs> I was not a fan of the production quality in the original game. It looked very bland. This looks like it's got a bit more to go on. I like that paper map. That's pretty cool. Uh, some boxes, diaries. Oh, God, yeah, you have a... Well, you're putting stickers everywhere. It is a legacy game at the end of the day. You play it once and you're done. Uh, but you can get some metal coins and some wooden tokens. That's pretty cool, but I'm sure that comes with a cost. But the King's Dilemma was good. But it was about 15 odd games, and by the time we got to about game 10, 9 or 10, we were kind of done. It sort of dragged on a little bit after that, and we were quite keen to get it finished. But eventually we did, and it was fun. But it is a bit of a commitment uh, to you know get through, and at least you don't have to get King's Dilemma to play Queen's Dilemma. Frankly, I would probably just stick to Queen's Dilemma because if this is going to be an iteration or a reiteration of this, then this will have had more development, more improvements. You're basically buying the lesser version by getting the King's one, probably. Uh, it doesn't look like I uh, did a review, or if I did, they haven't put it on here, so not much I can say on top of that. But yeah, you are talking about 25 hours or so for a campaign because each scenario can take you anywhere between like an hour to 90 minutes. I think some have even taken two hours. It really does depend on how the city goes. But, you know, it is a cool concept of how your decisions tell the story in a different way and how you get, like, little level-up abilities and how, you know, what was I playing? I was playing, like, a religious fanatic zealot-type group. So anytime things came out that was like, you know, oh, somebody's trying to blaspheme here. I'm going, like, you know, burn them at the stake. You know, it's, it's cool stuff like that. And it does create some good moments, but it is quite dark, there is some you know, morally questionable decisions you have to make. So if that's going to put you off, you might want to be careful. What have we got here then? Oh, blimey. So basic pledge is... Basic pledge is 100 euros. Wow. That's a lot of money for the basic one. Although, VAT and sales tax is included. So that's probably about 80 at the end of the day. That's not bad, that's not bad. You get a decent amount of game in there, but it's still not cheap. The recharge pack is going to set you an extra 30 euro on top. Uh, then you've got even more upgrade packs or whatever they are for another 30 euros. What's the difference between that? So that tiny little box there is another 30 euro, is it? Blimey, it's not cheap. Oh, King's Dilemma Chronicles on Steam. That sounds cool, actually. This game actually might suit me more as a Steam app. I see, okay. Hmm. That sounds cool. I mean, you could play this in a nice short time, go through the story and do stuff. Yeah, you know what? I'm down for an app version of this. Just to see how that goes. Uh, let's see. And you can get the King's Dilemma on top, which seems like you're going to add that on price-wise. Oh, blimey. Uh, okay. All right, there's a decent amount of content in here. But shipping... Wow. Uh, oh, God, yeah, we're not even in that one. Um, Where are we? Great Britain? Austria? Great Britain. Central Europe, 20 euro. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Why is that two separate prices? That's got to be... 
That's 20 euro and 35 euro. That must be if it's a deluxe box or... It must be like the basic game and then add-ons, but... That's a lot of shipping, man. That is a lot of shipping. I mean, 135 euros or so. 120 at least to get the basic game. It's pricey. It is very pricey. It was fun, but I don't know if I'm desperate to play the Queen's version. And then finally, just very quickly, I don't tend to go mad for these, but, uh, you know, they are good. I just don't tend to spend a ton of money on them. That is the Legendary Metal Coin Season 7. So these coins do look amazing, I gotta say. But, you know, obviously they're pricey and you're gonna have to pay the ends of the earth for them. But they've got a new season. Season 7, Forge Pirate. Quite like those. I could see those working in something like Dead Reckoning if you haven't got the metal coins in there already. Arkham Game Tokens, I'm not sure I'm sold on. I mean, they're very bright colors with this little wire thing on it. And the three on the back. I'm not certain I'm down for those. The Forged Dinosaur is interesting. Although I'd probably get a little bit confused that it's a coin. When it's basically shaped like a fossil. But thematic wise that's cool. I like these elven ones. These elven ones are pretty good. Maybe use it in like Lord of the... Yeah, Lord of the Rings doesn't have money. Lord of Journeys of Malerf. So what would you use them in? Halfling. So this is more for D&D &D gamers I suspect. General gold pieces. That is definitely D&D. This is for every trade in the Mediterranean Euro game that's ever existed. Ooh, these look nice. Oh, Lost Ru Yeah, I could see this in Lost Ruins of Arnak. But then you don't need three denominations of different colors. Each coin is worth the same. So you could say that one is five, one is three, and that. But, I mean, the copper ones don't look anywhere near as nice as those gold ones. I don't know how you would really split up the denomination. You only get about 20 of these coins. So you don't get much in each set. So I don't know if you get enough coins in this box to actually do Lost Ruins of Arnak. But through here, you can also order all their other sets, and they had a lot. And I mean, a lot. Quite a bit. That's a lot of coins. <laughs> That's a lot of coins. Even some potions along the way. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of stuff there. And Oh, Ninja Geek's done something on here. So, wow, these are awesome. Need to pimp out your own board game currency. Check out these amazing legendary metal coins. Uh, let's see, the Halfling theme set that works with Runebound. Yeah, I know he's a big fan of that one. Also double-sided. Yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah, fair enough. Give um, See what Ninja Geek uh, Mark Monk's done on this and give him a look. Uh, board Game Ramblings has done some stuff on here. Cool. And uh, there's some smaller ones here. The Charity Board Gamers. Okay, fine, yeah. All right, got some extra view points on there besides the norm. But they're not cheap. I mean, what are you paying here? £26 for a set? Not including shipping and tax? Well, actually, you wouldn't have to pay tax so much on... Well, actually, no, you still would have to pay a little bit. But still, it's a lot. There's a lot in this. But maybe it's all good. Maybe it's all good. You know, maybe it's worth it. But my problem, if I bought these, would be which game to use them for. Because a lot of games need more than 24 coins. There's not many that need only a few coins. And what I would like to see, I don't know if it's on this page, and oh, blimey, you've got to spend 12 euro, 10 pounds to ship these things as well. 36 pound plus, 36 plus pounds to ship one set of 20 something coins. I still think they're not cheap. They are not cheap. Well, I like these pouches, they're nice. Um, extra coin set, extra coin. I'm not buying, not paying a pound forty in that for each coin I shove in it. The only thing is, I just don't know what games I'd use these in. You know, elements. Uh, elements is that for Spirit Island? Water tree. Is there six elements? I thought there was more. I'd be curious if that would work for Spirit Island actually. Train, space, Samara Indian, magician, werewolf. Again, I don't know where these coins are going to get used. Adian, is there any Adian games I've got that need coins? Not to my knowledge. Drowmanger, Greek mythology, I mean I'm sure there's some Civ games that you could use some of these in. Uh, vampire, post-apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic. I mean they look cool, I mean Fallout, does that use coins? I mean I don't play Fallout, but in fact do I even have any post-apocalyptic games? Tribes of the Wind doesn't count, and that doesn't have coins. A zombie, Japanese, Ooh, I mean Icky would like these. But then how many coins do you use in Icky? I don't know, Icky might work with these. That'd be an interesting mix. Spartans, Egyptians, I'm sure there'll be a Viking. I'm sure there's a million games that will work with the Viking ones. Cyberpunk, I guess if you're into Netrunner still. Uh, if in which case, well done for sticking with it for this long. Far East. 
Well, I'd rather have the metal coins that look like this for the Far East than have the cardboard versions where you got to poke out the little ones board and dice. That's for certain. Uh, Wild West. How many coins do you need in... Yeah, how many coins do you need in Western Legends, if any? Don't use dollar bills in that one, so that wouldn't really work. I mean, that is my biggest gripe. I just don't know which games only need about 20-something coins and where these will be the most used. By all means, let some people know in the comments what you think, because some of you that have actually bought these coins will have actual stories to tell. But wow, um... £200 to get every single coin. But that's just every single coin. That's not actually sets. So you've got to pay £354 to get 20 metal coin sets. Wow. Um, I hope you're a coin collector because that's kind of the way I see it. Alright, fine. Well, that's it. I need to wrap this up for my throat's sake and to get this edited and out. So, pick of the month. Pick of the month? I don't really know. There's nothing that's really jumped to mind. You know, a bit, a bit biased to say on the underground, especially when they're not shipping to the Europe and the UK, but, I mean, it's not different from the other one. It's just two new maps. I just want two new maps. I'm just going to tell you to go check out the base game. I can't really say it's my pick of the week. Uh, same with cam uh, Canvas. Unconscious Mind. Again, I've played it. And it is $120 plus. €120 Euro plus. But it will be well produced if you buy it. That's saying it's going to look good. But do you need that much content for it? $120 is a lot. I don't know. And as I say, the rules need to stew in the oven just a bit longer. I need to see some tweaks to make it perfect. Uh, Roleplayer Adventures is good, but that is a waste of money. I'd rather just get the expansion on retail, assuming that it will come out on retail. And, you know, it's a pricey one. Aqua Garden, Die the Dead, no. Zoo Tycoon, no, I could be Ceres. Ceres is tending, actually, yeah. Uh, I think I'm probably, for value-wise, gameplay-wise, Unconscious Mind's probably the, uh, well, I don't know, Role Player is very good as well. Role Player and Unconscious Mind are probably the best gameplay things here, from what I've played. I have not played Ceres, but it looks cool, it's got a great cover. It's only $60, though, that's a Good price, and it looks like you get quite a decent amount in the game. It looks like the you know, the dual worker placement selection looks pretty good. And what do what do my buddies say? Series is super fresh. It has two different types of worker placement actions that you can do. I think it is super cool. Like I say, quotes are quotes. You can only take so much from a few words. But this dual worker placement system sounds good, and the spinny asteroid belt sounds good. So you know what, Ceres. You know, you're intriguing me enough that you get my pick of the month. You know, I think it it sounds like a cool game. I'm definitely interested to try it out when it comes out on retail. But I'm just quite impressed that if you just ignore this unnecessary printed, 3D printed spacecraft, you can pay $70 for a game plus a little expansion or just pay $60. Now, granted, you've got to ship it. You know, shipping's on all of them. But 60 for a base set and you can get a coupon loyalty reward... And you can pick it up from Essen if you're going there already. It's a pretty good deal. Pretty good deal. So, when thinking about how interested I am in the game combined with value, which is something that needs to be talked about a lot more on the Kickstarters at the moment, I think Ceres gets my pick of the month. So there you go. That's my uh, monthly roundup for November. Uh, I'll do this again mid-December, mid-January as per usual. And sorry if your Kickstarter didn't get mentioned. It's not because I don't like your Kickstarter. It's just because I can only talk about so much in the space of an hour. And, you know, my throat will only last so long. And, you know, I wish you the best of luck with every Kickstarter campaign that there is. And all I say to people is just, you know, be careful about what you spend your money on be wary of the hype trains you know know who you trust in terms of opinions and i mean actual proper reviews not just you know previews and that but by all means just be careful with your money okay board games are getting expensive kickstarters are getting very very expensive i mean most stuff there i was looking at was over a hundred dollars and for games that should cost you you know cascadia would probably kickstart for that much now and i bought it for what like 30 30 quid or something 25 quid i bought it for you know it's a great little game i wouldn't pay like 80 to 100 bucks for cascadia or anything like that no would not tabris does not look like it would cost that much and you know some of these other ones may justify the cost in terms of production quality 
but is the game good enough to warrant that cost? I mean, a lot of games don't justify such a huge cost for them. You know, they can do over time with expansions, but you already like the base game. You can buy Wingspan, for example, for a cheaper price than 150 bucks. Yes, it might have cost that much in expansions to this date, but at least you got to buy the base game and try it and get it and not have to worry about Deluxified upgrades and FOMO and stuff. I mean, that's why this is called The Fear of Missing Out, because a lot of this does boil down to The Fear of Missing Out. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up, so thanks for joining me on this monthly roundup. I'll see you on the next video. If you like what you see, then please thumb it up on YouTube, share it on social media. But most of all, let me know your comments. What do you think about all the games that I've talked about? Do any of them take your fancy? Do any of them not seem good to you? Have you actually played some of these games? In which case, I would very much like to hear your thoughts down below. So until next time, remember, regardless of whether you're missing out or not, it's still only a game, so watch your pennies and shop smartly. Take care, and bye for now.